Welcome to our latest video on Diamond and Graphite. This video is aimed at GCSE students and it is the third video in the series. You should have already watched the video on Ionic and Covalent Bonding. By the end of this video lesson, you should be able to explain the meaning of the term allotrope and understand that diamond and graphite are allotropes of carbon. You should also be able to describe and explain the properties of both diamond and graphite and how these properties are linked to their structure and bonding. Allotropes are different structural forms of the same element. Diamond and graphite are two structural forms of the element carbon. During this video, we'll be discussing the different structures and bonding in diamond and graphite, as well as looking at their properties and their uses. So let's start by looking at diamond. Diamond has a giant covalent structure and the carbon atoms are arranged tetrahedrally in this structure. Now in diamond, there are strong covalent bonds in all directions and this structure influences the properties that diamond has and also dictates the uses that diamond has as well. So if we look at diamond in even more detail, you can see that each carbon atom has four covalent bonds. Now carbon is in group four, so therefore if it has four bonds, all its outer shell electrons are used in bonding. There are no free electrons, there are no spare electrons. And this means that diamond is unable to conduct electricity. To conduct electricity, it would have to have spare or free electrons that are able to move over the structure. It doesn't have this, so diamond is an insulator. The fact that diamond has a giant structure with strong covalent bonds in all directions means that diamond's other properties are an extremely high melting point. It would take thousands of degrees C to melt it. And its hardness. Diamond is the hardest material known to man. The reason for these two properties is that it would take lots of energy to break the many, many strong covalent bonds that exist in all directions in this structure. Most people will be familiar with diamond's use in jewellery. However, its other uses are linked to some of the properties we've already discussed. For example, diamond is used in cutting tools, it's used in drill bits, the ends of drills, it's used in diamond tip saws. These are all because of diamond's extreme hardness. Now let's turn our attention to another allotrope of carbon, graphite. Graphite has a giant structure, just like diamond. However, this allotrope is made up of hexagonal layers of carbon atoms. Now these hexagonal layers are held together by weak forces. Just like we found in diamond, the structure of this allotrope links to its properties and uses. So let's look at graphite in a little bit more detail. Well, graphite has hexagonal layers of carbon atoms and the bonding within these layers is very strong. Therefore, the fact that it has a giant structure and strong covalent bonds within the layers means that graphite has a high melting point. Where it differs to diamond is the fact that the bonding is not strong in all directions. There are weak forces between the layers and these layers can slide over each other, which gives graphite its lubricating properties and means that graphite is very soft, unlike diamond. Another difference between graphite and diamond is the fact that graphite has the ability to conduct electricity. In graphite, each carbon has three bonds. Now you remember that carbon is a group four element, so that means it has four electrons in its outer shell. Only three of these electrons are used in bonding if it has three bonds. So therefore, one electron is spare, it's free, it's able to move over the whole structure. Now we call this ability to spread over the whole structure delocalization. And having delocalized electrons or free electrons 
is the reason why graphite can conduct both electricity and heat. Like diamond, graphite's uses are linked to its properties, its structure and its bonding. Graphite is used as a lubricant because it has weak forces between the layers and the layers can slide over each other. It's also used in pencils because graphite is soft and this again is because the layers can slide over each other. Graphite is also used in electrolysis as electrodes because graphite is unreactive and it's a good conductor of electricity. Carbon is not the only element that has allotropes. For example, sulfur has a rhombic form and a monoclinic form. Oxygen can be also found as O3, which makes up the ozone layer. And tin has a grey form, a white form and a rhombic form. In the case of many allotropes, a transition temperature exists where one allotrope can be changed into another allotrope simply by heating. Unfortunately, this is not the case for graphite and diamond. It would be lovely to be able to heat up our tennis rackets or golf clubs and turn them into diamond, but sadly this is not possible. Now we would like you to attempt some exam questions to test your understanding of diamond and graphite. These questions are from the WJC specification. However, they are very applicable to other exam boards. So here is the first question. We would like you to pause the video and have a go at answering the question. We will then go through the answers together. So now let's see how you got on with this first exam question. So the question is asking, explain why diamond has a higher melting point than hydrogen. Now with this question, it's important to talk about diamond and hydrogen. So you get one mark if you said that diamond has a giant structure with many strong covalent bonds in all directions. And if you then go on to say that a lot of energy is needed to separate the atoms or break these bonds, you get a second mark. To get the final mark, you must talk about hydrogen. Now hydrogen is made up of simple molecules with weak forces between them and therefore it takes less energy to separate them. In our previous video on covalent bonding, we discussed the properties of covalent substances and discussed the fact that covalent substances consist of simple molecules. If you're not familiar with this, it's definitely worth going back to our YouTube channel and watching this video. In the second part of this question, you're asked to come up with one other property other than a high melting point that graphite demonstrates. There are two possible answers here. You could talk about it being an electrical or thermal conductor and explaining this by the fact that it has three delocalized electrons, or you could talk about it being soft, slippery, or having lubricating properties because it has weak bonds between the layers and the layers are able to slide over each other. It's very important to talk not only about the property, but also to list the reason why it has this property. Now question two comes in two parts. Here's the first part of question two. Please pause the video and have a go at answering the question. Now pause the video and attempt the second part of question two. So now let's see how you got on. So the first part of this question is asking why diamond is hard and has a high melting point. And then it's asking why graphite is soft and feels greasy. So for the first bit, you need to say that diamond has a giant structure with lots of strong covalent bonds in all directions and therefore it takes a lot of energy to break the bonds. When answering why graphite is soft and feels greasy, you need to state that it has weak forces between the layers and the layers are therefore able to slide over each other. Now let's look at the final part of question two. 
A use of diamond which relies on it being hard and having a high melting point could be drill bits, cutting tools, etc. A use of graphite which relies on it being soft and feeling greasy could be a pencil or a lubricant. As we come to the end of this video lesson, it's important to look back at our lesson objectives to make sure that we've understood every part of this video. So by the end of this video lesson, you should now be able to explain the meaning of the term allotrope and understand that diamond and graphite are allotropes of carbon. You should also be able to describe and explain the properties of both diamond and graphite and how these properties are linked to their structure and bonding. Thank you for watching this video. There are more videos at our YouTube channel, Dr. Rowe Chemistry, and at our Twitter site, at Rata Chemistry.